a wrap. Yeah. She's smart, sassy, and very outspoken. Sarah Michelle Geller segued from selling burgers to stealing soap scenes to slaying vampires. On this episode of Revealed, Sarah will set the record straight about her unusual childhood, her strained relationship with Susan Lucci, and her very own prince. Sarah Michelle Geller is about to be revealed. We didn't have the greatest relationship. I don't believe ambition or drive. I don't believe they're bad words. A debacle of epic proportions. Buffy the Vampire Slayer made Sarah Michelle Gellar a household name, but Sarah was already an accomplished actress before she sunk her teeth into Buffy. In the next hour, you'll hear about her personal journey, her professional triumphs, and those moments that still make Sarah cringe. This better not be embarrassing. Oh, don't worry, Sarah. I had them put a non-embarrassing clause in my contract. Hey, why didn't I think of that? I had no idea you'd been doing this this long. So I was four years old. Now, how did all of it start? One of those stories, like the Schwab's drugstore story, I was, uh, I was four years old, and I was at this, like, cabaret-type show for kids, and this woman came up to me and said, do you want to be on TV? And I said, sure, my name is Sarah Michelle Geller. I live at, and I gave her my address and my phone number. I was proud. I, I literally just learned it. You slated yourself. Yeah, literally. I mean, I did. I, I literally only just learned my phone number. I was three and a half or however old I was, and about a week later, my mother got this phone call and just turned to me, what did you do? Oh, this nice lady wants me to be in movies. And my mom's thinking it's like the biggest joke, and um, I met with her, and that's it. I started working. I did my first movie about uh, like God, and it's like like two months later. What did your mom think of it when it all started? I think she thought it was a fluke. <clears throat> I think it wasn't something she invested a lot in. Um, it certainly was a great way, you know. She was a single mom raising a child in New York City, and obviously financially, that's incredibly difficult and incredible strain. So. Even just a little bit of modeling here and there would be great for my education. And she thought, well, if Sarah has fun and it works, then let's try it. And, and that's pretty much what it was when I was younger. An only child, Sarah was seven when her parents divorced. She doesn't talk about her father, who passed away in 2001, but she's happy to talk about what those early acting gigs meant to her. I read you had done 100 commercials. I have. I've done over 100 commercials. It paid for my, my, my New York School private education. A very, very message for grown-ups. Do I look 20% smaller to you? I must to McDonald's. When I order a regular burger at McDonald's, they make it with 20% less meat than Burger King. Unbelievable. It was the first time that another advertising company had ever used another company's name in a commercial. We take for granted now, you know, Wendy says Burger King, or this one says that one, Bounty says, you know, whatever it is. They didn't do that then. So I was five years old and I was doing a Burger King commercial and I mentioned McDonald's and it was unheard of at the time. So McDonald's turned around and sued not only Burger King, they sued the advertising uh, company, J. Walter Thompson, and they sued me at five years old. Did you realize, though, at five, I'm being sued? No, I had no clue. I mean, I remember that, you know, all kids had their, their birthday parties at McDonald's play places, I think they were called. And so I remember, like, not being allowed to go at first because God forbid someone and then my mother turned around and said to these people um, I don't think that people who work at corporate McDonald's are really in the stores I think it's okay luckily I know perfect way to show McDonald's how I feel I go to Burger King eventually the lawsuit was dropped and I did um, Let's see, there's a commercial I did with Seth Green. I think we did a couple commercials together and I may be making that up, but I know we did um, this one it was a cookie ad. It was a Duncan Hines commercial. So we love to bring that one out and scare each other. How'd they make them so homemade tasting? They're so little, and it's um, a play on the Maltese Falcon. Yeah, those people at Duncan Hines, always thinking. Oh, I bet they just captured a mom and made her give them the recipe. Sarah and Seth eventually reconnected on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The young kids are all... You're either a professional or your parents have you in it, do you know? And she and I were both driven by ourselves. It was like, your parents are on the outside, and you just, you just know, this is what I want to do. This is something I've 
I seem to have a, an affinity for. You worked in the theater in New York. I did, I did. I did a lot of Broadway. I did um, Horton Foote uh, with Matthew Broderick and Eric Stoltz. We did The Widow Claire. Uh, now, I was about nine years old, and I was in a play with Ferris. So I was the most popular person in my class. And then, right when Eric took over, Some Kind of Wonderful came out. It was a great couple of years for me. And uh, I have the distinction of being in the only Neil Simon Broadway show ever to close out of town. <laughs> the only one. The show was Jake's Women, with Stockard Channing, Peter Coyote, and Joyce Van Patten. After a trial run in San Diego, the cast was looking forward to Broadway. And Peter Coyote got a call from the New York Times. It was really early in the morning saying, what's your comment on the fact that, that uh, Neil closed the show? And that's how we all found out. It was pretty devastating. And how old were you at the time? I was about 13, which is a really hard age. And I had left school for six months and then all of a sudden had to, you know, come right back in. And it was, it was pretty difficult. And then about a year and a half later, Neil decided to do the show again. And at that point, I thought, well, it's all I want to do. That's my show. I started that. And I was too old. Which is the first time that I faced being too old. Over the hill at 14. Over the hill at 14. When we return, a little girl talk. That means no boys allowed. Pops are positive and loopy not. And later, slaying vampires isn't as easy as it looks. I broke down in tears and I said, I can't do this. Tonight at 8, the true Hollywood story of Justine Bateman. Then at 9, it's an all-new love chain, Gwyneth Paltrow, followed by an... Good. Star, the most convenient and hassle-free way for everyone to transform all their loose change into lightweight cash. Is your hair becoming too much of a handful? Is it breaking up? New Garnier Fructis, the first fortifying shampoo with active fruit concentrate from Garnier. It's proven. The Garnier Fructis system makes hair up to five times stronger. And so much shinier. Shines with all its strength. New Garnier Fructis. Garnier. It's time for the Pep Boys Futura Tire Sale. Save up to 20% on all Futura Touring Tires. Or find tires that start at just $20. And get 0% interest for six months on your Pep Boys credit card. Pep Boys, we're car people. When I saw pictures of myself on our family vacation, I destroyed them. Because at 178 pounds, you don't want to be reminded. When I realized I was removing myself from our family's memories, I called Jenny Craig. Jenny Craig's Ultimate Choice program gives you personal support with simple ways to lose weight that fit the way you live. I lost 50 pounds with Jenny Craig, and I feel great about myself again. And I've got the pictures to prove it. It's your final week to lose 20 pounds for just $20 plus the cost of food. Call 1-800-JENNY-20. Jenny Craig. It works. You know what can give our age away as much as wrinkles? Loss of firmness. Neutrogena visibly firm. The only moisturizer that replenishes copper. The collagen building mineral essential for firm skin. Want to be firmer here, here, here? I do. Neutrogena visibly firm. By the time Sarah Michelle Gellar was a teenager, she was already a showbiz veteran. She started in commercials, performed on the stage, and appeared on television shows, including The Guiding Light and Spencer for Hire. Are there moments where you cringe, like old TV appearances? Oh, guest star. Constantly, you know. You just, it's the hair. It's always the hair. Oh. It's, and the eyebrows. The eyebrows. People forget that, you know, before you learn how to tweeze, and you just have that, like, Thick black unibrow. Oh wait, I saw Girl Talk. Oh. No, you did not. No, you so did not. That was great. How did you get that? I have ways. <laughs> it was a great idea. It was like sort of a Saturday Night Live talk show type thing for young girls, and it was Soleil Moon Fry and I, and we had huge guest stars, you know, because it was New Kids on the Block and Tiffany. So, do you have a boyfriend? Joey Lawrence. I mean, this was like big for the 80s, but it didn't get sold. We did five episodes, and then. And then that was it. Can I have that tape when you're done with it? <laughs> so I can burn it, please. Hey, Soleil. Have you ever had a really, really weird dream? No, but I'm working on it. One time, I dreamed.
streamed out to the beach, and then all of a sudden, this big sand woman, who we're talking tremendously chunky, starts chasing me down the beach, chanting, Sarah Geller, Sarah Michelle Geller, Sarah! Oh, goodness, goodness me. You know, the other one that I get all the time is Swan's Crossing. I still get people come up to me and like, remember Swan's Crossing? I get that one. I get that one all the time. Described as Dynasty for teenagers, Swan's Crossing was a daily syndicated soap that lasted only three months. Still, Sarah was acting and getting paid for it. It was something that I really liked doing, but school always came first. I was also a figure skater. I did Taekwondo. I mean, I, I, I sort of, I did everything and I was sort of testing everything out. And it was only when, when I was, probably about when I was 16, when I said, you know, I need to figure out what I want to do. Because it was always easy to do, you know, one big project a year, a Broadway show, a movie of the week, a couple episodes of a show, and still have school. But then there comes that point where you need to figure out, is my life going to be about college? Is it going to be about, you know, getting up and going to SAT prep courses and doing all that? Or is this something that I really want to do? And it was a hard decision. You have been doing this since you were four years old. Were you always aware sometimes when you didn't get jobs? What was that like? Well, absolutely. See, the rejection, people always say, I would never let my children do that because of the rejection. But rejection is an incredibly real thing that I think people face in their life. And I think when you learn how to deal with it at an early age, it's actually, it makes you, it, it makes you deal with it much better. It, it's really no different than not getting a starting position on a little league team or not being the lead in the school play. They're all forms of rejection. I just learned how to deal with them on an incredibly mature and understanding level very early. And luckily, because of what I did, if I didn't get one commercial, well, there's an audition tomorrow. So it was a really good way. The hard thing for me was when you're in school, that's a very, very tough age to miss six months of and then come back. And for me, I came back like nothing had changed. But to everyone else, I'd been gone for six months mm -hmm. and uh, didn't fit in anymore. And, and Kids are, specifically girls, are incredibly cruel at that age. Anyone that says high school is the best time of their lives, man, I, I, I can't believe it. For a while, Sarah attended New York's High School of Performing Arts, the school that inspired the movie Fame. And I thought, well, now I'll be surrounded with people that are artistic, that like what I like, and I'll fit in. And, and it's a public school, so I'd be saving all the tuition. And I stayed there about a month. And I actually got kicked out. Um, Why did you get kicked out? Because they believe that you shouldn't be working professionally until they teach you everything that they want to do, that they need to teach you. But I was constantly missing school because I was working. I didn't like the school. It's not like the movie, the television show. People don't dance. And I expected, like, literally, like, you know, Leroy to come, like, dancing down the aisle. And, and it wasn't like that. Instead, Sarah enrolled at the professional children's school designed for students with irregular schedules. It was all about academics. You, we don't need gym. We all have our extracurricular activities. We don't need to take these art classes. And so I was able to um, take my classes only in the morning so that I could audition in the afternoon. PCS was an amazing experience. And you look at like, my classmates, like Jerry O'Connell, Tara Reed, Donald Faison. I mean, people that I still like, people say, How do you guys have reunions? And I said, well, Yeah, just every Saturday, you know, at the coffee bean. Because I still see so many of the people I went to school with. At that point, were you competitive? I was competitive with myself. I wasn't, if someone next to me got an A and I got an A minus, I wanted to get an A plus next time, not because of that person, but because I wanted to best myself. I, I found myself just competing with myself mainly. And I was able, because my credits, I had finished so many of my classes, because I would stay late and finish them, that I was able to graduate high school um, right before I turned 16. No, I was 15. I sense like a drive. That's why... Yeah, ab I mean, absolutely. I don't believe ambition or drive. I don't believe they're bad words. I think a lot of times they get misused, and it, especially on a woman, it becomes a bad thing. Right. I love what I do. I'm very lucky to be successful at that, and I'm very, very grateful to that. I watched all my friends go to college and go to graduate school and get out and feel incredibly lost and not know what they wanted to do or, or then take these jobs where they weren't happy. But I get up every morning, and I love what I do. And I feel very blessed because of that. Coming up, the dirt on Sarah's soap days. We didn't have the greatest relationship, and it was one of those things that I didn't understand at the time. And later, becoming Buffy. Just a debacle of epic proportions. Gwyneth Paltrow's love chain reads like a who's who of Hollywood. There's been incredible highs and incredible lows. Love Change Win a Paltrow, tonight at 9, only on E! On the next all-new Celebrities Uncensored, Winona goes shopping for a kiss from Brittany Murphy. Paris hits the town.
and Jack hits his limit. It's the world of the paparazzi that has everyone talking. Celebrities Uncensored, all new, tonight at 10, only on E. My hair color does something yours doesn't. Because it's new Garnier Nutrice, the only hair color that nourishes with grape seed and avocado oil. Rich, radiant color. All because Nutrice means nourish. So hair takes color better and holds it longer, root to tip. And speaking of color, nourished hair means better color. And grays? Gone. Guaranteed. Can your hair color do all that? New Garnier Nutrice. Nourished hair, better color. Garnier. Trust them. They're experts. Presenting Coinstar, the most convenient and hassle-free way for everyone to transform all their loose change into lightweight cash. You can't raise a child and then marry it. The 101 most shocking moments in entertainment. The countdown starts July 13th on E. The idea is simple. Put the ball in the net. But this is the WUSA. You must travel from point A to B and make your presence felt every step of the way. You cannot let anything get over, under, or around you at any cost. In the WUSA, women play hard. The fans have the time of their lives. And kids can look into their heroes' eyes and see what they can become. Catch WUSA action every Saturday. Visit WUSA.com for more information. The WUSA. It could be you. All my life, I've dreamed of being an undisputed champion of the world. All my life, I've dreamed of being pound for pound the greatest fighter in the world. All my life, I've dreamed. I don't just chase dreams, I catch them. Join us for a night of live Iron City Pro Boxing. Pittsburgh's own Rayco War Saunders puts the controversial decision behind him in his quest to become the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Saturday, June 28th, 7 p.m. at Monroeville Expo Mart. Call for tickets. Talented, ambitious, and driven, Sarah Michelle Geller made acting a priority at an early age. I'd go to school, and then I'd do my homework, and then I'd go to the theater, and then everyone at the theater would go out afterwards and play and then sleep till noon, but I had to finish my homework and be up the next day. Just before her 16th birthday, Sarah landed the role of Kendall Hart, the devious daughter of daytime vixen Susan Lucci. So was it a big deal when you got all my children? Oh, it was a huge deal. Uh, my mother watched all my children when she was pregnant with me. I grew up watching all my children. One of my best friends at the time who was in school with me was on all my children. I mean, to me, it was just like the greatest thing. And I got to stay in New York and finish school um, and a full-time job, which is hard in New York City. Thank God. Don't push me away. I need you. I know you need me to wait. What is this? What are you doing? Stop it! No! No! No, you can't throw me out! And then where am I supposed to go? Sarah was just a teenager, but her character was supposed to be in her early 20s. The truth is, it's not challenging at all, because I think Sarah at 16 is more mature than Kendall will probably ever be. Sarah was nominated for a Daytime Emmy twice, in 1994 and 1995. You know my first reaction? Ah! <laughs> it, was sort of, it was sort of along the lines of my, my reaction. Um, I don't think it's really sunk in yet. It sunk in when Sarah took home the award in 1995. I think you try not to, but I think everyone, you know, in their own right, everyone dreams about this. This is just the most amazing dream come true, and so, yeah, I guess. You try not to think about it, though. You don't want to chase yourself. Were you surprised when you won the Emmy? It was so weird, you know, I... You know, growing up, you watch all these award shows, and you think it's just going to be this amazing culmination and, and just, you know, this incredible night, and it was so exciting, and, and my best friend, Eva LaRue, we all went, we had a hotel room, you know, we all got dressed up, and we, my mother was there, we all went, and my award was like the second one of the night, and then they announced my name, and I, I went up there, and I remember being really scared because Kelly Ripa told me she had lent me her shoes. And she told me that if I won, I didn't thank her. She was going to throw her shoe at me. So I remember looking really briefly out at the audience and seeing Kelly holding her foot in the air, like as a threat that if I didn't mention her, that I'd get the, th the, sh the, the shoe thrown in my head. And uh, I remember seeing that, you know, time's up, time's up. And you walk backstage and you have this award. 
and then they really quickly take it away from you, and then you, you do all this, and then they give it back to you, but it doesn't have your name on it, it's just, and they send you back into the audience, and it's kind of over. And I thought, well, that's kind of anticlimactic. Sarah made sure to thank Kelly, but she wouldn't be working with her co-star much longer. Just days after winning the Emmy, Sarah announced she was leaving all my children. It was sort of unfortunate timing. I had wanted to leave for some time. I had felt that the situation wasn't great. And I was, you know, I was, I'd been a job for three years, which at my age, you know, at 17, that's a really long time. And I really wanted to spread my wings and I wanted to try the things. I had gotten a couple of jobs, one of which was a role in Clueless, the movie, which of course at my age was like the only thing I wanted to do. And they wouldn't let me out to do it, and I really felt that it was time to move on. I'd been asking for a long time, and it was like the next night after when they told me that I could leave. So it sort of looked like I won and disappeared, but it certainly wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. I read tabloid things that you and Susan Lucci had a contentious relationship. Are the, is that grounded in fact, or is it just something that they used once you became successful? And what, we didn't have the greatest relationship, and it was one of those things that I didn't understand at the time, and then for the longest time didn't even want to speak about it, um, because it was difficult. Um, it's very hard to come on to an existing show like that and, and shake things up, and soaps, they're very true in their ways and, and the way things work, and, and I don't think I really understood necessarily what was going on at the time. I was only 16 years old. But if I had to do it again, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I've met some of the most amazing people who I'm still really friendly with to the day. And I feel like I learned so much about my craft on a soap because soaps are so technical. You have to learn just an incredible amount of dialogue in a really short period of time. You have to hit a mark without looking and not block someone's light. And you only get one take. And now those things come really easily so I can actually only focus on the work now. Um, but it was, it was hard. It was really hard being there. But that's interesting, too, at 16, being self-possessed enough that you were of your own mindset. Yes and no. I, I, think it, I think at 16 I was a little confused because things weren't so great there and things were shaky and I didn't get a lot of support from the producers of the show. Um, but the cast, like I said over and over, I mean, they they're, were amazing. And, of course, tabloids love to build stuff up, I'm sure. You know, luckily, I don't read them that often. I mean, I can't say I don't ever. I try to read them when I'm not in them. When did you want to come west? When I was younger, my mother wanted to move out here. She felt that the quality of life would be better, and, and New York was so expensive. And I said, if you leave, I'm going to run away from home. I'm never leaving New York. I would never go. That's a hateful place. And uh, it was when I left out my children. They said, okay, if this is what I want to do, then you really have to come here. It's really hard. It's so hard to make it in New York. And uh, so I moved out here, like, three months after I left. All my children. You look like a California girl. It's the hair, <laughs> the blonde hair. Um, I like, I like having grass. I like having places for my dogs. All I wanted growing up was a dog, and you know we couldn't have a dog in New York because you can't really walk a dog, and apartments are so small. So I had like the New York version of you know the dog pet. I had the frogs, the fish, the rabbit. You know you can have a dog out here and open up your front yard and they can play, and it's a nice life out here. Sarah's mother joined her daughter in Los Angeles soon after. You give her so much credit, and but yet she wasn't a stage mother. No, she was the farthest thing. School was always the most important thing. If my grades dropped below an A minus, I had to stop auditioning. I mean, school was always the education was really important that that I got, and it was always something that I wanted to do. And she would tell me before every job. Now remember, if you don't want to do this anymore, you have to tell me. You always have to speak up. She taught me everything. I know, and uh, if I can be half the person that she is, then, then I'm in pretty good shape. I think it's really great in a way, though, that you're personally thought of as being a really strong, self-possessed woman. And also, because of the character you play on Buffy, you're really like a role model. And I know you probably hate hearing that. No, it's an honor. I mean, it, there are certain complications that come with that, but I think it only, in the end, makes you a better person. Because if people think of you that way, I think it's something you want to continue and you want to put out that way. I know what it was like for me younger having role models and I mean I still have role models to this day and, and you still look up to certain people and you want to emulate them and it's because they put something out there that uh, is special that's something that that people want to be like. You know who are your role models? Who are my role models? Um, let's see. Well, my mom is the obvious one and an amazing woman and has done so much with so little and, and I wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for everything that she gave up for me. Um, in terms of actors, there are so many. There's people like 
like Sandy Bullock, who is just a consummate professional and such a nice person, and always people like to be around her. And I love Annette Bening and Stalker Channing. There's so many. I think that's that's lucky. You know, there's so many women in this industry that are really amazing and really talented, and and there's so many to to look up to. And also women that are encouraging to other women. Yeah, it's not nasty. I think you always heard these old Hollywood stories of how, you know, oh, I don't like the younger one, all about Eve, or, or any of these stories, but I, I certainly have never felt that. I've been very lucky. Next on Revealed, Buffy breaks down. I feel horrible, and I'm sobbing, and the scare is just running down my face. And later, Sarah marries her prince. My relationships had always been really private before Freddy. Here's this week's E! News update, brought to you by Avino. Dynamic trio Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu, and Cameron Diaz are back in action Friday in Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. This is it, you ready? Plus, The Hours debuts on DVD starring Oscar winner Nicole Kidman. And this weekend, E! News Live hangs with the Terminator himself for an action-packed T-News Live. This E! News update is brought to you by Avino. At Romano's Macaroni Grill, you are literally surrounded by the sights, the sounds, and the aromas of great Italian dishes like our new twice-baked lasagna with meatballs. Welcome to Romano's Macaroni Grill. Into our kitchen and into our heart. Introducing the all-wheel drive Infiniti FX, the SUV with the heart of a sports car. The new Infiniti FX. California early morning, summer's in the air. I can't wait to see her with her sexy summer hair. She drives me crazy. Who's that beach Sun-kissed summer hair. This is no place for a bandage. Till now, a band-aid brand comes the liquid bandage. An instant waterproof seal that stays on anywhere, which helps every cut heal fast. Liquid bandage from Band-Aid brand. It's the biggest Michelin sale of the year, right now at Sears Auto Centers. Save 10 to 40 percent, because every Michelin is on sale at the lowest prices of the season. Every performance Michelin, every passenger Michelin, for cars, for light trucks, for minivans, and SUVs. At America's number one store for Michelins, Sears Auto Centers. So hurry in. The biggest Michelin sale of the year. Sears. Good life. Great price. My small business is always busy. My family never slows down. I don't have time for complicated phone plans. I just want things simple. So we got MCI business complete. I got the neighborhood built by MCI. Now I get unlimited local calls. And unlimited long distance. Together. For one low price. On one bill. How simple is that? At home or at your small business, get unlimited local and long distance for one low monthly price. Call 1-800-JOIN-MCI today. This portion of E brought to you by The Neighborhood, built by MCI. For Sarah Michelle Gellar, 1995 was a year of change. The native New Yorker left all my children and headed west. But Hollywood didn't exactly roll out the red carpet. I've been out here about six months, and I was, you know, really getting a lot of doors closed to my face. It was really hard. You know, you get that thing, you come off the soap, you have an Emmy, and it doesn't mean anything out here. And I was, I was really struggling. But Sarah's days of struggle were numbered, thanks to a casting call for a new television show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The series was based on the 1992 movie of the same name. I had gone on this general meeting uh, with Fox. They said, oh, we have this project coming up, we'd love you to meet on it, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I said, oh, like the movie? And they said, no, 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 not like the movie. 
And I said, I'd love to, but I had finally gotten a job and I was going to Australia for two months to do this movie of the week, which was an incredible experience. Just, I just turned 18. You know, I was off in Australia, my first job by myself, you know, and just... They like to have a good time and, in Australia. Yeah, they like to have, and I was like, oh, 18 is legal in Australia. And, you know, we were filming at the beach, and, and I didn't, you know, I didn't want to miss out on it. And I finished the project, and my manager and called and said, look, you know, they're getting to the end of casting for Buffy. You're really right for it, but you have no guarantees. Like, do you want to come back? And it was Carnival out there. And I'd always wanted to go, and I had my heart set on going. And for some reason, I was like, okay, I'll come home. Smart move. Sarah met with Buffy creator Joss Whedon and the producers of the television show. And they called me that night, do we want you a screen test? I'm like, this is like a Cinderella story. This is how it's supposed to happen. I have this feeling I come home. And they called me about three days later and said, you know, we changed our mind. And I was like, okay, we don't want you to test for Buffy. We want you to test for Cordelia. And I said, I need to think about it. Because I'd just come off three years of playing this stereotypical bad girl character. And I thought, well, if I do this now, is there ever, am I ever going to be able, you know, to do anything else? Cut to three years later when I'm begging for the role in Cruel Intentions and no one can see me as a bad girl. But um, I said, you know, I pass. I don't, I don't want to do it. Did they have a different Buffy they wanted? They didn't have anyone. They were going to they they test Buffy's and Cordelia's on the same day, but they wanted me to test for Cordelia. And I said, I don't want to do it. And I sat back and I wrote the pilot again, and there was something really special about it. And I said, you know, I don't have a job. It's just a pilot. You know, if it doesn't turn out well, it won't get picked up. I don't have to worry about it. It's, you know, it's the WB. It was kind of an unheard of network at the time. Okay, I'll go and I'll screen test. Sarah had no idea what was in store for her. I had left the test that night, and they called me, and they said, okay, there's, there's good news, and there's good news. The good news is we want to hire you for Cordelia. But we didn't find a Buffy. So if you want to come back in, we're going to start meeting girls on Saturday. You're the only person they responded to come back in now that you have, like, a better understanding of the show. And that's a very risky thing to do, because then sometimes what happens is they say you have this job, but then they see you as something else, but they don't really see you as that, and you could risk really losing both roles. So I came back in on Saturday, and I read, and I worked for about two hours with them. I would go in, they'd give me notes, I'd go out, I'd see two or three more girls come in, I'd go back in. This went on for three or four more days. I went in Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and finally, after probably like seven hours of auditioning all told, they said, okay, we're going to test again, we want you to come back in. But the way a screen test works when you have a studio and a network is you test for one company first and then the next. And I said, well, I'm only going to do it if I can get guarantees that I'm going to go to the network automatically. And they said, we won't give that to you. And I said, fine, I'm stepping back. I can't do this anymore. I'll be Cordelia. They said, please, please, please come. So I went to the studio on Friday. And I had to wait until Monday to go to the network. There were two girls. And the way they do it, it's so hard, the way they do it out here. They bring both girls in. The first girl goes in. They tell her, please wait. Second girl goes in. They say, please wait. Then they say, Sarah, we'd like you to come back in again. They say, other girl, you can go home. I mean, it's horrible. It's a horrible process. But the process got even worse. And so they said they want me to come back in and read one more time. And I broke down in tears and I said, I can't do this. I, I'll be Cordelia. I'll be so happy. I can't. I, I, I'm doubting myself. I feel horrible. And I'm sobbing. And the mascara is just running down my face and like the snot's dripping. And please come in. Please come in. I can't do this. So they dragged me in and I walked in and it's a room full of about 30 people. And they all start applauding and said, you know, congratulations. You got the role. And, uh, yeah, and I then I just started crying harder. <laughs> and then it was just. I mean, that you really had to jump through hoops. I mean, come on. And I will never let them forget it. <laughs> I remind them all the time. What do you say to Joss? I just remind them all the time how unsure of me they were, how they made me, you know, they tortured me, so I just get to torture them back. The torture didn't end when production began. We shot the pilot, and the pilot was a disaster. It was... I can't even begin to tell you, like, just a debacle of epic proportions. I mean... It was supposed to be a six-day shoot. It became nine days. The studio wanted to shut us down. And then they announced that we were going to be a mid-season replacement. And the pity looks that I got from people, oh, honey, mid-season replacement on the WB, you'll get a job next year. I mean, literally, there's a, uh, my favorite story of all was um, I met Kiefer Sutherland uh, a couple years ago with some friends. We were all having dinner. And uh, he, we were talking, and he said, you know, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm doing this pilot, you know, called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And he said, I think my dad was in that movie. And I said, yeah, he was. And he's out there making a television show of that movie. And he looks at me and he goes, you seem talented. You'll get another job next year. And I finally ran into him like seven, six years later. He's now my favorite show. I'm absurd. And both of our shows were uh, shooting on the same lot. And uh, I got to go up to him. And he said, well, guess I was wrong about that one.
Despite the doubters, the cast went to work on the first season of Buffy. After shooting the first 12 episodes, Sarah went off to film the team thriller I Know What You Did Last Summer. Buffy hadn't aired yet, and Sarah still didn't know if anyone would watch. We were filming this really small town in North Carolina. They didn't even get the WB, because WB didn't have that much clearance in those days. So I would call home, like, is, is anybody watching the show? You know, does anybody like the show? And she's like, yeah, I think people like it. You know, it's okay. No clue what was going on, like, waiting in pins and needles to see if the show was even going to get picked up for another season. When we return, how to charm the boss. No producers in the network of a show like to hear you talk about the fact that you think their decisions are really stupid and lame. And later, Sarah opens up about the love of her life. I don't want to pretend like it's a secret, and I don't want to pretend like it's something I want to hide. Gwyneth Paltrow's love chain reads like a who's who of Hollywood. There's been incredible highs and incredible lows. Love Change with a Paltrow, tonight at 9, only on E. Still shaving? Veet Mousse, the one-of-a-kind hair remover and an aerosol. Simply spray on, wait, then wash off. Veet Mousse, the easy way to keep your legs feeling smoother for longer than shaving. Introducing La Creme Mousse. You'll love the texture. You'll love the taste. You'll love it or it's free. I love it. New Dan and La Creme Mousse. Love it or it's free. Put down the glue gun and step away. Take me down the fair one. Get the creative juices flowing. Can you lose that? Yes, I can. I told my friends I hand painted all mine. I like how they put all this together. Yep. And you don't get arrested for touching things. What we say on clearance? This would make a cool window balance. Your place definitely says I am Pam. Here one, get in touch with your senses. Only hours on DVD. Cannot find peace by avoiding life. Hugh Meryl Strait, Julianne Moore, and this year's Academy Award winner Nicole Kidman share their unique insight about this extraordinary film. The time for the hours is now. Rated PG-13. It's a new dimension in comfort. Yeah! Now, Playtex Gentle Glide tampons are even more comfortable than ever. With a new, smoother, pearlescent applicator. Incredible wearing comfort. And unbeatable protection. Playtex tampons. So comfortable, you can't even feel them. If you like a soft scent, now there's a new bathroom tissue. New Charmin Scents. The scent is just on the tube, not on the tissue. Leaving your bathroom wildflower. Fresh! New Scents, part of the Charmin family. It's time for the Pep Boys Futura Tire Sale. Save up to 20% on all Futura Touring Tires. Or find tires that start at just $20. And get 0% interest for six months on your Pep Boys credit card. Pep Boys, we're car people. When Buffy the Vampire Slayer hit the air in 1997, Sarah Michelle Gellar had no idea how quickly the Buffy buzz would grow. At the time, the 19-year-old actress was shooting her first starring movie role in I Know What You Did Last Summer. The film featured other stars in the making, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Ryan Phillippe, and a tall, dark, and handsome actor named Freddie Prince Jr. But more on him later. The day Sarah wrapped I Know What You Did Last Summer, she flew to Atlanta to start filming Scream 2. It was the first time I was kind of in a big city, and all of a sudden, people were like, that's Buffy, that's Buffy. And that was my first time when I really realized that people were actually watching the show. I had no clue. I'd never seen it. Buffy's fan base was building. And the WB said, okay, we're going to let this show sort of run its course, because we were really still finding ourselves the first year. Were we funny? Were we campy? Were we scary? And then the WB really said, okay, you know, go run with it. You know, have fun, make the show. And I think it was really by the end of the second season when we really became sort of that standout show. But with success came controversy. Being outspoken as you are, has it ever gotten you in trouble? Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's hard. I, 
there's a really fine line. There was a whole thing going on for a while where people were really blaming television and film for crime and, and, and things that were going wrong, specifically with, with Columbine and all these things that were happening. And I found myself getting in a lot of trouble at that point because they pulled an episode of Buffy that I thought was really wonderful. And I thought it was the stupidest decision I'd ever seen. It just happened that the show was going to air about three or four weeks after the Columbine incident. And so they um, came to us and said, you know, we can't do this. The episode was all about a, a, she gains this power to be able to hear people's thoughts. She can't control how many voices she hears at a time, so it just became chaos in her head. And what she realizes is that the pain that she feels, the awkwardness of adolescence, that everybody feels. So she starts to like pick up conversations and snippets, and then she hears that someone's going to kill everybody. This time tomorrow, I'll kill you all. The one voice that, that really started to stand out was the distant loner feeling like no one would notice if he wasn't there and he was up in a bell tower with a gun. And so of course she assumes that he's going to shoot everyone and they have this whole conversation about how he's so misunderstood and people treat him badly and she says, you don't understand, everybody feel that way. My life happens to on occasion suck beyond the telling of it. Sometimes more than I can handle. And it's not just mine. Every single person down there is ignoring your pain because they're too busy with their own. And she finally says, you know, give me the gun and he hands her the gun and she says to him, why were you going to shoot everyone? That's not the answer. And he said, I was just, I was going to shoot myself. I was going to put myself out of this misery. So it wasn't a show about violent rage and aggression and disaffected youth taking out their anger on, you know, unsuspecting students. It was about the isolation of, of high school. So it was just this great lesson about what was wrong. Oh, no, kid had a gun in school can't show it on television. Things were so sensitive at the time that we were more than willing to take it off the air for a while. It has aired since then. Um, but uh, but I, I see her point too because it was, um, you know, really, you know, people become so uh, afraid of, you know, offending or sending the wrong message that you start to trample on certain rights of freedom of speech. And it made me so mad. But, you know, of course no one no producers in network of a show like to hear you talk about the fact that you think their decision is really stupid and lame. It's a bold thing for her to do that because she puts herself on the line and says this is what I believe in. Sarah also puts herself on the line for her friends. Sarah is so outgoing and so just gung-ho and and she's nurturing and she takes you under her wing and it's so strange because it, it, people think I'm the strong one and it's the opposite. You know when you're with Sarah you sort of feel safe. She gets a bad rap sometimes because she's assertive. And I, I think that's unfair because she stands up for herself, she stands up for the crew, and she stands up for the integrity of the show, the character, things that we all discussed that we would have liked to have seen done that somebody said we can't do that. She stood up for that and she got labeled difficult, which is, which is a sad label to get for someone, who, for someone like her. You know, there's a certain point where I feel like actors need to be quiet and people don't want to hear my thoughts on politics and, you know, people just want me to stop talking. Um, but you do have a voice and people will listen to you. And if you're in a position where kids might look up to you and if I could stop one kid from someone gives them a cigarette and they go, that's not cool, then I'm happy. My job is done. Up until now, Sarah hasn't said much about her personal life, but her romance with Freddie Prince Jr. wasn't a secret for long. Pretty much the luckiest guy on the planet, so uh, I, uh, I got a lot of love for that girl, and I always will. My relationships had always been really private before Freddie, and we were able, we had a really good, like, four months, five months before it got out there, so we really had four or five months to sort of develop our relationship, and luckily, we had been friends for a long time, so there was a lot of history there. Coming up next on Reveal. You know, you're 22 years old just trying to figure out your life. The Golden Girl. Love Chris and Dunst. The Ice Princess. She's kind of scary, sexy. Mm -hmm. The Blonde Bombshell. She needs a spanker. Hollywood's favorite blondes come in all shades of hot. She's just a flaming, glowing, loving, all of flaming love. Rank Hollywood's hottest blondes, all new, Sunday at 9 on E. A $10 million commercial contract, $800 grand per concert performance, and carries a $20,000 purse. It's good to beat Britney Spears. All new Sunday at 10. Is this a good place to fight acne? Why not? With new clear silk wipes.
The acne fighting power of Clear Sill now goes anywhere. New Clear Sill acne wipes. Clear skin, Clear Sill. Split ends got you all fired up. About to blow a fuse. New Garnier Fructis, the first fortifying conditioner with active fruit concentrate from Garnier. It pulls the plug on split ends. It's proven. The Garnier Fructis system makes hair up to five times stronger and so much shinier. For hair that shines with all its strength, new Garnier Fructis fortifying conditioner. Garnier. Some things you don't want getting out, like your secret crush or your period. Kotex introduces the Leak Lock System, a new dual layer design. You feel protected, more secure. Kotex fits, period. Mary Madonna of the Waltons is looking for love in the big city. Star dates Mary Madonna, all new, Tuesday at 9 on E. All my life, I've dreamed of being an undisputed champion of the world. All my life, I've dreamed of being pound for pound the greatest fighter in the world. All my life, I've dreamed. I don't just chase dreams, I catch them. Join us for a night of live Iron City Pro Boxing. Pittsburgh's own Rayco War Saunders puts the controversial decision behind him in his quest to become the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Saturday, June 28th, 7 p.m. at Monroeville Expo Mart. Call for tickets. At Beaches, the world's best family all-inclusive resorts, moms and dads can take separate vacations. From their kids. Little ones can play in the sand. Grown-ups are just stuck in the mud. Kids love having fun together. We love the time we have alone. Beaches Resorts by Sandals. A family vacation the whole family can enjoy. Book now. Save 35%. Call your travel agent or 1-800-BEACHES. <laughs> Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. have shared the big screen, but it's their time off camera that gets the most attention. I mean, the private life that is out there isn't what people think. You know what I mean? It's like we keep what's important to us very private, and ain't nobody going to find out. It's hard when people make comments on the street about your relationship where people feel like they know you, and, you know, you're 22 years old just trying to figure out your life and, and people in magazines say, well, that won't last, or, oh, I saw him, you know, making out with this person, or it, it's difficult, or you try to have private moments and, and there's a guy with a camera, you know, 50 feet away. People try to infiltrate our lives at times, but it, they see us walking down the street and getting an ice cream cone, and that's not, we're a little deeper than that. We're a little deeper than 31 flavors. Do you think in a way that you help each other because you both understand it? Absolutely. You know, being with another actor has its disadvantages and its great advantages. You know, I can come home and say, I had the worst hair day. And he'll actually understand what that means, or most guys would be, shut up. Who cares? You know, so he does understand that to a degree. Um, you know, like last night when I was having trauma because I had nothing to wear today and I didn't know what to wear, and that was a whole horrible thing. So that was drama. That was big drama. And what did he say? He took this out and said, wear this and be quiet. He's got good taste. He has very good taste. He has excellent taste. Clothing and jewelry. He has, he has excellent taste. Another plus of a male actor. The couple were engaged in April 2001 and married in September 2002. He's so perfect for her. The two of them are such a nice balance. And he's so totally like kind of mellow and deep back. And, and she's a little bit more hyper, <laughs> you know, and, and fun-loving and gregarious. And they just blend and complement each other perfectly. They just seem to bring out the best in each other. They really seem to like their friends and family. They're very family oriented. They lead a life that I think most people would be surprised. It's almost like what's exotic to them is what's normal to us. Why do you think it works? We balance each other out. I'm a little crazy. He's a little saner. Um, you know, he always said I was way too mature and that he was a child and we sort of like we, we sort of met in the middle. I learned to like comic books and video games. He has a new appreciation for antique books. That relationship has had a profound effect on her being calm and taking everything a little bit more lightly. When when you get criticized as publicly as she has, it's so helpful to have at least one person who's always in your corner who you feel is objective, but but is supportive as well. This is someone that I love. This is someone that I enjoy talking about. And I don't want to pretend like it's a secret. And I don't want to pretend like it's something I want to hide. We sort of, I mean, I don't want to say we complete each other because it sounds like, you know, 
to learn from them. I'm sure you're quiet. <laughs> uh, but I understand. I understand that line now. I understand the importance and the seriousness of, of that comment where before it was a really cute cat trace from a movie. It means something to me now. Just when every aspect of Sarah's life seemed perfect, she was hit with a bombshell. After five seasons and 100 episodes, the producers of Buffy the Vampire Slayer announced that the show was being sold to a higher bidder. Buffy was leaving the WB for UPN. Surprise! It was about money. And um, what the main thing was that, it was that on the WB they had never had a show go to five years before. And licensing agreements and such, it's all very technical, but that's the time generally when the network that airs the show starts paying the producers of the show, in our case 20th Century Fox, a lot more money. And they could not agree on that sum. Buffy and the WB sort of went hand in hand. We sort of made each other. And of course you want to be where you feel like your family is, and it's a very daunting, you know, a, a very sort of daunting task. And everyone kept saying, well, they'll just, you know, they'll save the UPN now. And you had all those people. It was sort of split 50-50. People either wanted the show to be this huge success and prove that we could save another network, or people were waiting for us to fail. When you are on a network, in a, in a way, you know, in a business sense, they're kind of like your family. And, uh, and the fact that they would, that for even a business reason, that they would decide that they didn't want the show, you can't help but feel personally hurt. You can't help but feel, like, wounded, you know. I remember it was about 8 in the morning. We were in Australia, and the phones were ringing off the hook. And it was a double whammy day. It was, uh, I found out the show moved to UPN, and then I found out that a local radio station gave out our address. <laughs> so it was one of those just, I didn't know which end was which. How can I do that? I, I don't know. I have no idea. We were, we had this beautiful house in Australia, and it was right on the water. And so all these tour boats would go by. And in the beginning, you know, you didn't think anything of them. And then as it went on, the tour boats started getting closer and closer to our home as the months went on, to the point where you could actually hear, and you, you'd hear, and they'd be in all different languages, oh, Sam, Michelle, Gala, and Freddie, Prince, Junior. And you'd just see the cameras start coming out, and, uh, yeah, don't live on the water. That's what I learned. Sarah and Freddie were in Australia shooting the movie version of the cartoon Scooby-Doo. They played the fictional couple Daphne and Fred. Now, were you even born when the cartoon was on? Well, it started in the 60s. I mean, you know, it was on when I was... But, I mean, do you remember watching it? Yeah, I think that's the amazing thing about Scooby-Doo, is that no matter what country you're in, everybody knows Scooby-Doo. Everyone knows Ruck Row. Everyone, everyone identifies with a dog. It's something that's iconic, not just in America. Uh, so it, it's, over, it's, it's overwhelming. It's always difficult to take a cartoon character and bring it to the screen, because you're taking what's essentially a flat cartoon character and trying to make it human and give it human qualities. Daphne is known as being the, the one that always gets kidnapped, the one that can't take care of herself. She's kind of flighty. People forget, you know, I'm not Buffy. I'm Sarah. I act like Buffy and I can just as easily act like Daphne. Sarah and Freddy brought a pair of cartoon characters to life in Scooby-Doo. The couple also lent their voices to the animated feature, Happily Never After. And I get to be Cinderella, which is like my dream. I've been, you know, as Freddy said, I've been training my whole life for this role. The princess. Coming up next on Revealed. There are times like you want to roll so badly and you lose it and you think your life is over. Gwyneth Paltrow's love chain reads like a who's who of Hollywood. There's been incredible highs and incredible lows. Love chain Gwyneth Paltrow tonight at 9 only on E! On the next all-new Celebrities Uncensored, Winona goes shopping for a kiss from Brittany Murphy, Paris hits the town, and Jack hits his limit. It's the world of the paparazzi that has everyone talking. Celebrities Uncensored, all-new, tonight at 10, only on E! Sure is getting close to lunchtime. Any ideas? Subway's got something delicious. Like the new Chipotle Southwest Steak and Cheese. It's got a spicy kick. Excellent work, my friend. Subway, eat fresh! Not once, not twice, but three times beautiful. New Excellence Cream Hair Color from L'Oreal. Before I color, this new pre-treatment prepares and repairs fragile ends. During coloring, my rich, non-drip color cream protects. And after deep conditioning, protects my hair, keeping it silky for weeks. And grays, no way. Just incredible, beautiful, natural color. New Excellence Cream from L'Oreal Paris. Triple protective color. Because you're worth it. Get a perfect sunless tan. 
Instantly. Neutrogena Instant Bronze Sunless Tanning Foam. Instantly get natural looking color. It shows where it goes to prevent zebra-like streaks. No fake orange color, just a perfect sunless tan. Like that. Neutrogena Instant Bronze. Star Wars preferred guest. Wake up, wake up to a whole new dimension in comfort. Yeah! Because now Playtex Gentle Light tampons are even more comfortable than ever. With a great new pearlescent applicator that's smoother. <laughs> so it's even more comfortable to use. Comfort. Incredible wearing comfort. And unbeatable protection. So what are you waiting for? Discover a whole new dimension in comfort. From Playtex tampons. So comfortable, you can't even feel them. Wonderful. Okay, keep in the loop. Uh -huh. Get your break going with a light, crispy, chocolatey taste of a Kit Kat. Star, the most convenient and hassle-free way for everyone to transform all their loose change into lightweight cash. This portion of E brought to you by Coinstar, the most convenient and hassle-free way to transform your loose change into real cash.